Hello, and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to look at the Darkstalkers graphic file. Let's get into it. Scratch my elbow here. All right, so we got this nice, nice matte finish here. You know, it's kind of kind of like a glossy, rough texture. Might be hard to be hard to tell here in the camera. Oh, yeah, you can see a little bit of it there. You know, it's got this nice little sparkle to it. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool. So yeah, let's go. Let's pop this sucker open. We got a nice Dimitri silhouette here with Lilith and Morgan. I'll allow it. I'll allow it. Now we got a beautiful table of contents. Darkstalkers Art Gallery. Ah, uh, yes, yeah, this is a really cool series. It's not very popular over here, you know, made by Capcom. Morgan and Dimitri are kind of the canon Ryu of the series. And so we got a lot of uh, cool artwork here, though. Uh, a lot of the stuff's done by Shinkuro, Bengis, a lot of these Capcom SNK artists who ended up working back and forth for uh, Capcom and SNK and other studios. But yeah, these are really great. A lot of cool uh, Morgan poses, or Morrigan, however you'd like to pronounce it. Yeah, and Darkstalkers just like has a lot of really cool uh, character designs, like Morgan's a succubus, Dimitri's a vampire, you know, kind of, that kind of stuff. There's a Frankenstein. There's a there's a mummy. They're kind of hitting all the monsters. But yeah, you got a you got a lot of really cool stuff here. And so like a lot of this around this time, Joe Mad really found a lot of these Capcom artists and they were a huge influence on him and you can really see it arms and see like they, everybody's got these big clunky fists and that and really pronounced jaws and cheeks just really uh, a big part of his style once once you start looking at you now the Capcom art from around that time in the early 90s with X-Men versus Street Fighter X-Men Children of the Atom so yeah, you'll see you'll see a lot of that as we flip through this. But yeah, a lot of a lot of these like covers and posters and the arcade designs, jams. I, I like a lot of these like mix-ups. Like you know, it's like just this ball of characters is really cool. But that, and that's also the thing too. Like a lot of a lot of Capcom Japanese studios, especially, they weren't afraid to like do like a dark serious depiction of the characters but then also make a silly depiction of them you're you're gonna see a lot of that in this and you'll see a lot of that in japanese art books in general when they collect and celebrate the art for promoting the games but yeah a lot of re a lot of really cool stuff here yeah like i'm just i'm just a big fan of capcom's art teams in general like they just did a lot of really cool stuff a lot of really cool ink stuff here Nice use of blacks and the, the pop in the front. A lot of that stuff's really cool. But yeah, we'll keep going here. So you've got a lot of the uh, digital paintings. This book's really tight as far as the uh, binding goes. As I'm going through it here, I've been noticing it's got a very stiff feel to it. But yeah, we'll, we'll persevere, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, a lot of this stuff was used for either like Cade cabinets, PS1, PS2, box arts, and, and whatnot. There's just so much promotional art for these games in the series. It's really cool. A lot of little designs as well. Yeah, that stuff's great. And we're getting a little spicy. A little Morgan and Lilith action here. BB Hood. You know how it is. Yeah, and they do... So, this is some other really cool stuff. Like, here you go. Here's, here's where you can see the Joe Mad. You can see the influence, the big clunky square hands, just chunky. Everything's really chunky. Pinheads. Drawing a lot of the huge, huge bodies and then just like a smaller size head, which makes them look a lot bigger. Just overall, like more imposing. And they get full moves list here, command lists, for each of the games in the series. You got Darkstalkers, Night Warriors, Darkstalkers 3, Vampire Savior 2, Vampire Hunter 2. It's got their moves list for each game, which is pretty cool. So this is this also kind of doubles as a art book and a little bit of a uh, strategy guide. There we go, some more, some more of that pinhead style. 
Let's see here, it's like all cross hatch stuff. It's really, it's really cool. I dig it. I dig it. And the, the strong use of cut, like, that's the other thing too. Like, you're not seeing in a lot of the painted stuff going directly to blacks. Like, a lot of this stuff is just allowed to breathe. I'm a big fan. Listen to that creak. But yeah. But see, like, you know what I mean? They're going full in on the anatomy. Like, everything's there. It's just kind of exaggerated. Some of the initial early designs for him, pretty goofy looking. And then some of them are like, oh, he's very regal. There we go. I'm a big fan of these werewolves. Woo! Yeah, like, it's it's really cool. Just to kind of see, like, see, again, we got these big chunky hands and feet. Really slender body. Really, really cool. Yeah, look. And so the funny thing about him is him doing the, like, the finger wag there. It's kind of like a little Bruce Lee kind of situation. All the art's so great for these series. And these, these are just great to have. And, you know, if you're a fan of the games especially they're great to have but just as a good reference just to kind of see like crib some crib some werewolf designs you know what i'm saying there we go the old frankenstein but again you know you see you see where the influences are and you see where a lot of people were seeing this art and getting really influenced by it Yeah, it's really cool, and also seeing like again, we're getting the the goofy art. Yeah, it's pretty it's pretty cool that they'll go from like these really clean, serious pieces to having just a little bit of goofbally stuff in it. Because I do think that's one of those things where people take their their characters, their OCs too seriously. Whether you're you know, writing and creating your own comics or games or whatever it is, and uh, yeah, don't take everything so seriously, like. You no, know, just enjoy, enjoy it. Like, look, have a goofy, chibi version of your character or whatever. You know, who cares? There we go. I I like his like British punk rocker style. Very cool. Very cool. But yeah, these these are really great. I love seeing all these designs for all the characters. He was just jamming out, playing the guitar. He's like a zombie. You know. But yeah, we're not gonna we're not getting into anything too serious here, you know. Looking at Morgan. Checking her out. Very nice. Very nice. We got the full moves list again. She's probably the, the poster child. She is the Ryu of Darkstalkers. You know, everybody knows who if you played Marvel vs. Capcom or any of those games like that. Or probably have just seen her around. She's very, very popular. A lot of statues, a lot of figures, a lot of fan art. She's very popular. But yeah, it's also cool when they show some of the other designs and stuff for her. She was very different initially, you know, and then they kind of went way into uh, the sexy vampire succubus kind of design. But yeah, really cool. Really cool. There we go. The, the mummy. But yeah, and that's a, that's the thing with Dark Soccer's. It was like straight up universal monsters, basically. Just kind of taken to 11. And they all have their own little... Their own little um, backstories and original kind of thing. They're not like straight up ripoffs or anything like that. Very influenced, I would say. Very influenced as a, a template, we'll say. But yeah, you know, you get a lot of, a lot of the regular designs. You know, so showing some of the endings and from the arcade games is really cool. Like these, these aren't these videos aren't meant to. I guess the best way to put it is meticulously dissect them. Like you know, these are to show you kind of the the surface of them, and if you think it's cool, check it out. Hunt them down. Some of these are probably going to be... Some of these art books and some of these um, collections are probably at this point going to be pretty cost prohibitive. I guess the best way to put it is, uh, you know, your mileage may vary. Uh, wh whether these are worth it to you to have in your own collections or uh, 
you know, you're just satisfied knowing they exist. Felicia here, checking stuff out. She's pretty popular too, you know, little cat girl. And yeah, she's had a lot of designs as well. It is, it is always really interesting to see like some of the initial sketches and designs for the characters and how how bad they were compared to the final designs that they kind of rested on. Bishamon. So yeah, he now we're getting kind of the Japanese kind of oni demon as far as mythical monsters and all that jazz. But yeah, really cool design, you know. Big, big samurai, but you know, that, and that's the thing. Like all these guys are right chunky. That's the kind of thing I like about it. A lot of chunk. But yeah, there we go again. You know, everybody's got these big ass hands, big feet. Very influential. Very uh, stylish. Rikuyo. He's your merman. Your sea dude. Very cool, very cool design. Very, very fish-like, very aquatic. I like, I like how he has his little fins and, you know, gills. The whole, the whole deal. But yeah, still, still that big, that big chunky thing. There's not a lot of cross hatching. It's more just like a sh -tum 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 chunky shades. But yeah, looks good. Looks good. But yeah, and in some of his designs where he looks way more fishy as well you know some of this is some of these are small they're not going to show up very well but it is it is what it is here's our yeti our snowman our bigfoot he's got a lot of a lot of cool art kicking around there he's got his kids in his mouth you know how it is you know how you hold your kids in your mouth for safety but yeah there's some more some kind of funny designs here where he's very much more Bigfoot looking. And then they kind of they kind of went more to the Yeti in the end. Ah, uh, here we go. We got our big mechanical man. And he was probably a huge influence on Calabrito from Battle Chasers. Just by looking at his design and his, his shaped shape language. But yeah. Probably, probably a bit of Calabrito uh, took influence from him, and I'd probably say Chrono Trigger as well. Probably the huge, the two main influences for Calabrito in uh, Battle Chasers. But yeah, yeah, all this stuff's really cool. Ah, uh, here's Pyron. It's your big fired hell demon kind of guy. And he's pretty cool. Like, yeah, let's see, like, a lot of this stuff. And it's interesting because it's not really, like, cross-hatching. It's just, like, straight line, straight line, straight line, straight line to give this kind of depth of sh to the muscles and everything like that. It's pretty interesting. Pretty interesting how they, you know, weren't really doing cross-hatching per se, but just kind of indicating kind of where the curve or the shade would be. Yeah, in all these, it's it's pretty interesting, like, that they aren't doing any cross It's just vertical vertical line work and then you know you get your more kind of clean kind of photo coloring photoshop i assume it'd be photoshop then but you know but yeah yeah it gets more his designs so where he's very more much more of an alien look but yeah like he's huge all all of his designs he's just gigantic i like it a lot more of these little pinheads 99 uh, here we go here we go. Yeah, and he's, you know, the classic. He's he's protecting the little girl. He's got the whole thing going. He's got his beads. But yeah, and all his designs are pretty cool too. But yeah, again, that this whole this whole series again you know, kind of spawned that kind of that chunky style. Like the anatomy and stuff is just exaggerated. Big hands, big feet, kind of really narrow waists and just kind of chunky. I like it. Heisen Ko, kind of going into um, Chinese myth and lore with her. 
It's pretty cool though. Cool, cool character design. A lot, a lot of the stuff is really well done. Yeah, these are just so great to look at. Jedi. He's also really cool. The Ebony Messiah. I'll have you know. Uh, yeah, just like this, the stuff never took itself super seriously, and I like it. The Lovely Hunter. BB Hood. Baby Bonnie Hood. I'll have you know. But yeah, these games are great. If you're a big fan of Darkstalkers or um, Capcom art in general. Queen Bee. QB. Yeah. The Demonic Bug Swarming on Souls. I have to stick that stuff in there. It's a good time. A lot of, a lot of the cool designs for these guys... They sort of, sort of started cutting out other versions, the alternate versions, before they they locked in on this one. So maybe some of these were just straight up like, hey, this is where we're going. But yeah, they're really cool. Lilith. Kind of the mirror to uh, Morgan. Got a bunch of, bunch of art and stuff designed for her. Yeah, yeah, it looks really good. A lot of the little character endings and stuff. John Talbane, the Wolfman. All that fun stuff. Got all these character designs, hidden characters. The whole deal. Yeah, it's all it's all really good. Character by game list. They got it all there for you. I'm coming up on the end. I, I do love these, like the stage lists, and seeing like the rough stage art for those is really cool. It's gonna be incredibly hard to see on this. But yeah, these are, let's see if we can get a good zoom in. Yeah, like this kind of stuff is really cool. I like these kind of character stage design, kind of preemptive layouts and stuff before they actually go right into digitizing them, you know, doing all the pixel art. Retrospection. So yeah, we're we're coming right up on the end here. A whole bunch of talk and timeline for when the games came out, you know, for the Sega Saturn, PS1, Arcade. And that stuff's really cool if you're into it. I happen to be. I'm a big video game collector. And so I like to I like to see them within the art book acknowledge the actual history of the game. Yeah, that's really cool. There's a lot of stuff for the comics, because there were Darkstalkers comics, I have them. It's quite a multimedia universe. There was a animated series, the whole deal. Darkstalkers got the the works over the years. Yeah, tons of figures, statues, the lot. Oh yeah, look, they have the OVA in here as well. So yeah, they, this this book really covers all the bases. We got stuff for the North American comics, you know, stuff with Udon and all that. Yeah, really cool. Really cool, kind of glossary, going over all the terms for the games and the world. Yeah, it's a really solid, really solid package if you're into Darkstalkers or you're just looking for a cool art book. we got some more art books from Capcom. But yeah, we are in here. We're done. Okay, that's going to do it for me. If you've liked everything you've seen here today, like, comment, subscribe, ring that bell for notifications, and we'll see you next time. Alrighty, take care. Bye-bye.